Hello and welcome back to this Library of Runa series. In this video, we'll be taking on the Kane office. This fight has some interesting mechanics and gives us some sweet cards, so let's get started. The Kane office is a 1 act, 3 vs 3 fight focused around the charge mechanic introduced by the warp cleanup crew. However, unlike the cleanup crew, Nemo, Martina, and Bada have passives that synergize very well with charge. At emotion level 2 and up, after using charge, the enemies will gain 1 strength and 1 endurance. Bada will also get 1 protection when he uses charge. Martina does extra stagger damage with attacks and has the lone fixer passive, so you shouldn't leave her for last. Nemo has a passive similar to Oscar or Kim's unrelenting passive where once per act, if he were to take a lethal hit, instead he nullifies it and expends all charge to heal 5 HP per charge expended to a max of 50. Notably, this won't reduce the damage he takes after it triggers, so he can still kill him on the scene it activates. Nemo also has Deflect Assault, so be careful about free hitting them with weak dice. Additionally, Bada and Martina are blunt damage injured, while Nemo slash injured, so keep that in mind. I would definitely recommend bringing some Stagger Recovery through Strong Evade Dice or Mind Hauler, as your librarians are very likely to get staggered with all the damage flying around. I'd also recommend taking out either Martina or Bada first, as their unique pages are both devastating in different ways. Anyway, let's talk about their pages and how to counter them. Their first page is Energy Shield. This is a defensive focused 1 cost with a weak 1, a decent 2, and weak 3. However, the weak 1 is by design, because if it loses the clash, the user gains 1 charge on top of the 3 charge that the page gives on use. Generally in this reception, you want to clash against everything to get emotion coins so you can get ego pages as fast as possible, but this is definitely the lowest priority page as its only offensive dice is a 3-5 pierce. When compared to Rewind, this page has a 0.16 lower roll average, so anything that beats Rewind will beat this card. Their other 1 cost card is Energy Conversion. This page has a decent 1 that draws a page on hit and a weak 2. But the main part of this card is that it can spend 4 charge to restore 3 light, making it the first in one of the only negative 2 cost cards. Compared to Leap, it has a 0.25 lower roll average, so any page you used against that will work here. Their first 2 cost is Absorb Impact. This card is most similar to Dimensional Rift, but has a much higher roll average and a block on 1 instead of a slash. Generally, you'll want to have something with a strong 2 to be able to beat the 5 to 8. The Golden Opportunity is a powered up version of Energy Shield and Rewind, having higher rolls and giving more charge in exchange for costing more light. Notably, the strong evade on 1 is a clash win instead of lose, so you might want to counter it with another evade dice. Ready Up is a defensive charge payoff with strong rolls that spends 2 charge to give all allies 1 protection for 2 scenes. This page is somewhat annoying to clash against, but having an evade on 3 means that it most likely won't get much value. Finally, let's go over the enemy's unique pages. Martina has Uncanny Strike a 2 cost with a 0.5 higher roll average than Absorb Impact with a lot more power in the offensive die. Additionally, if the offensive die hits, it spends 2 charge to inflict 6 stagger damage. This effect can trigger up to 3 times for a total of 18 stagger damage for 6 charge, which is quite a lot. Fortunately, Martina's only charge enabler is Energy Shield, so she usually won't have enough charge to get the entire effect off. Bada's special page is Devastating Thrash. This bomb page can spend 4 charge to give all the dice 2 power. When unempowered, it has a 0.5 lower roll average than Wrath of Torment, but when empowered, it has a 1.5 higher roll average, making this a hard page to clash into. If it's unempowered, something like an Empowered Faint Memories or 3 cost Blunt Bomb page will clash well into it, but when it's empowered, you might need to rely on power boosters to be able to contend with it. Fortunately, even though its roll average is lower, Wrath of Torment on Emma will still somewhat consistently beat it due to it getting 3 extra power from her passives. Finally, Nemo's special page is Energy Beam, a 4 cost page with one very powerful die. Additionally, if it clashes into a page that has an offensive die on 2 or 3, it'll expend 2 charge to destroy the next offensive die. Your best bet for this page is to either tank it or use something like a puppet blockade to mitigate the damage while losing the weak offensive die. Since this is a 3v3 reception, you'll want to bring your strongest pages. 
I ran Eugene and two Emmas, but Oscar, Kim, Rose, or Unstable Crying Children are all strong. For counter pages, definitely bring something with a strong one like Deep Drag or Transpierce to try and counter Martina's Uncanny Strike. Additionally, cards with a block on one become a lot better since a lot of the enemy's powerful pages are strongest on one. Once you beat the Kane office and get their pages, there are a few builds that I found work best. The first is a Bada All-In deck. This deck has fairly strong clashing with 2 rewinds and 2 devastating thrash, as well as having decent staying power with 2 leap and energy conversion. The main thing to look out for is running out of charge since you only have 3 enablers and 6 payoffs. You might want to experiment with removing an energy conversion for an energy cycle to get another enabler. The next build is Nemo Tank. This build uses the defensive focus pages, a golden opportunity, and ready up in conjunction with the defensive power boosters to become a very strong clasher. 2 leap keeps your hands topped up and gives you haste to redirect, while 2 energy cycle and 1 energy conversion make sure you don't run out of light. Finally, if you want to make use of Nemo's unique page, then this mid-range build might be to your liking. 2 Leap and 2 Energy Conversion as is standard for charge builds, 2 Absorb Impact this time as it's a bit more offensive and can clash with most pages with 2 dice, 2 Golden Opportunity to clash with 3 dice pages, and Energy Beam as a silver bullet card. If you want to make your own charge decks, I'd recommend having about half enablers and half payoffs, and follow the standard of having your cards draw you at least 3 pages and restore 3 light. For passives, as long as you have Charge Shield and Energy Discharge, you can put pretty much anything else on and it'll work fine. In the next video, we'll be moving on to the middle left row, fighting the Blue Reverberation himself. I'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.